just out of my own sort of curiosity, whenever people say sort of grass-fed meat is better for you, are all grass-fed meat made the same? Is there different, like, it's like the word organic. Uh, is there a lot of variety within that? Like the way Belcampo does it, the way others do it? Just more color, if you could add to this whole word and what it means. Grass-fed beef has been on grass its entire life. And you want to look for the words 100% grass-fed and or grass-fed and finished. Mm -hmm. Now, the challenge with feeding beef grass its whole life is that it gains weight more slowly. Oh. Although beef didn't evolve eating corn and things, um, it can eat them. And in eating them, it gains weight more rapidly and has like a version of like an, an inflammatory response. Mm. If you actually look inside the rumen of the animal inside the stomach, it's like black and shiny inside compared to grass-fed animals, like green smells like compost. Mm. So the animals themselves, their whole physiology is is damaged by that food, but they also gain weight really quickly and they put on a lot of fat. It's like if you or me were to eat a bunch of processed food compared to eating a bunch of greens, mm -hmm. it's the same impact. You're going to blow up. So the problem for grass-fed is getting the animals to gain weight. Mm -hmm. They're getting a ton of exercise. They're eating really clean, <laughs> right? And they're super chill. Mm -hmm. So that's different from the animals that are kept still, eating really nutrient-dense foods and under a ton of stress, which is a confinement animal. So are all grass-fed meats created the same? The diet, yeah, nutritional profile broadly, but the length of time that the animal lives is extremely important for the flavor of the meat. We're taking our beef to 24 to 26 months. Conventional is around 18 months. So I'm always looking, you know, if you're evaluating grass-fed animals, you want to get animals that are typically uh, allowed to live for longer because their flavor is going to be better. There's going to be a bit more fat um, and their omega ratios also vary very differently. And I've seen omega ratios, you know, on our farm everywhere from one to three to one to one. Mm -hmm. You ideal is one to one. Game is typically one to one or one to two of omega three to sixes. But in operations where you don't have year round grass, it's more complicated. You know, you're feeding hay and you don't get that three to six ratio. Omega threes come from green grass. Um, they they're the fat in greens, and so they're scarce and costly, right? So. You can have grass-fed and finished animals that don't have that perfect ratio because maybe they're in a climate or for whatever reasons. We've had to do it too during the droughts, do hay finishing. It's not optimal. It changes the ratio a bit. So there's a little bit of variance within it. I'd say though, the, the variance within grass-fed is still small compared to the variance between conventional and grass-fed, right? So there's definitely things to look for within it, but the, the real difference is between those two also thing it, to notice is that it's not a verified word, okay? So uh, grass-fed means animals that have been on grass at some point in their life. Mm -hmm. The way the cattle industry is in the U.S., there's segmentation. So there's cow-calf operations. There's they, Then those calves get sold to stalker operations, which raise animals in their teens, basically, and then those get sold to feedlots. And so those three phases, that, that first phase of the cow-calf is always on grass. It's mother cows. And mom cows are amazing. They can thrive on anything and still put all their nutrients into their baby and their babies will be healthy. So you never are putting mother cows on really premium pasture. Mm -hmm. So it's usually just kind of like okay pasture, dirty lot. If you ever see kind of like, you know, scrubbly lots with lots of, you know, cows and calves on, that's a cow-calf operation. Mm -hmm. So there's also a, worm, a, a loophole, unfortunately, where people use the term grass-fed and they're actually referring to animals that at some point in their life had grass, but that might be pretty far in the rearview mirror. So you need to see, look at that uh, grass-fed and finished or grass-fed 100%. That ratio of omega-3s to 6s, it changes in like a week on grain. Wow. So it's radically different. Unfortunately, it's the same thing for you and me. You could eat clean for a month. You eat you know, junk for three days, you're garbage, right? Yeah. It's not like you can just like coast on that, yeah. right? We know what that's like. Yes. Same thing for animals. Our physiology changes. Food's the number one way we interact with our environment. Yeah. And our body changes really rapidly and dramatically. So, so we know Belcampo and just the way sort of this regenerative farming approach of Belcampo and the sort of high humane is good for the land, is good for the animal. Can you comment on ways it's good for the human that eats the meat? Is, is this meat better for you? 
Yes. It's, and this is where, you know, the kind of focus on the joy and animals doing yoga and all the sort of like cynical stuff about, about this type of agriculture. Say, just like <laughs> set that aside. Yeah. You know, it really is better for your health. Yeah. It's got a better fat ratio, it's less inflammatory, it's got higher protein. Um, it's just better product. I mean, in the, the case of beef, it's lower in fat and that fat is a better quality and it's higher uh, in, in poultry and pork is also higher in protein. So all the nutritionals are better. It's got higher density of vitamins, it's got higher density of minerals. And none of this stuff is radically different than, you know, it's like, not like it's the product is is black and white, but they're, every metric meaningfully is better in the right direction mm -hmm. across the board. So why wouldn't you?